Hello everybody. So now we are learning the topic called background jobs. In the SAP system, batch jobs are called background jobs. They are executed whether a user is locked onto the system or not. So this is the main difference from the execution of a program in a dialog mode. So background jobs has its advantages. Like what are the advantages? As I already told when compared to dialog work processes. So in this background jobs, users can run jobs after work or at the weekend. The program can run without locking user session and jobs that take a lot of time might be cancelled if they are executed online in a dialogue work process soon as they exceed a certain limit, right? So these are the few advantages of background jobs. So we are focusing on like background jobs types and steps. So these are very important thing. So if you see background job basically consists of three types. What are those three types? One is a class A type. Class A type we when we schedule a background job if the job need to be scheduled immediately and it's very uh, urgent that it need to be processed immediately then we have to schedule that background job in a class A type which is we called as highest priority. The second type is class B. So class B, if you are scheduling the background job not at highest but at medium priority. Similarly class C, if you are scheduling a job which is not um, uh, urgent, so you can put that in normal priority. So these are the three types of background jobs. can which can be scheduled with the different priorities. Apart from this, there are background job consists of one or more steps, right? So what are those steps? Steps are nothing but an ABAP program. So you're going to uh, see those, how we are going to uh, do practically when we are creating the background jobs. So you will co come across these kind of steps and uh, class A, class B, class C. So this is just a concept before I proceed with the practical sessions. So we have three steps. We call it the ABAP program. And one is your external command. And it third is your external program. OK? So <coughs> If you see here, an ABAP program can be scheduled as a step of a job. So if the ABAP program has one or more selection screens, you must create the input required there in advance in the form of a variant. So who will create that? That will be created by a ABAP. So he will, what he will do? He will provide a program and variant to the SAP basis and the business person who usually set up the jobs by using this parameters. So variant is nothing but it makes it possible to run an ABAP program in the background although the program requires input. So as I said, a program needs some steps and variant to run a job. Now, a external command. What is the use of external command? 
An external command is a call of a predefined script, a command or a program at OS level. With external commands, you can mask operating system calls and store them in the SAP system under a name. You can also use the SAP authorization concept to protect the execution of an external command. So this usually enables you to determine which users are allowed to execute which external commands, okay, on which target host and on which operating systems. So this is a one step of background job. Similarly, if you see an external program, what the use of external program? External program. This is an OS command. The SAP authorization concept only specifies whether a user can call external programs or not. Okay. So these are the steps of a background job. Basically, job can be triggered like there. If you want. Uh, if you are scheduling a uh, jobs, I mean like if one job is dependent on other jobs, then we call it as a triggering of a job. Once the first job is finished successfully, then the different job should also run, you know, after it, after the job is finished. So as I said, a job can be triggered in this way. So by scheduling it, uh, you can schedule the job um, on a particular date at a particular time. Okay. So this is how you are going to see in the practical session how we are going to create, how we are going to monitor background jobs and the steps and the types which are using in the background jobs. Hope you have understood the concept of background jobs. We are going to learn more detail in a practical in our next session. Thank you so much. Bye. Hello everybody. So as you have seen in our last topic that the concept of background jobs, the types of jobs and the steps used in jobs. So now we are going to see how to create a background jobs and how we are going to schedule that. So in SAP system, background processing is mainly used for execution of regular scheduled jobs. So you will be getting the job name and the program and steps by your functional consultant. Okay. Then you have to schedule the job accordingly. So they will also provide what time they want to need the job. So which and which day the job like is need to regularly runs every hour or in a week or a month. Okay. So to create the background job, the transaction code which we use here is SM36. Right. So using this transaction code, you are going to create and schedule the background jobs. So once you put SM36, hit enter. Now, as I said, like in a dialog mode, right? So the background processing also requires an SAP user with ID. So like most of the companies will using their own separate user for scheduling a background jobs or it can be used by a responsible person. So here I am going to show you on background jobs. Okay, so already I have some SAP standard job. Let, let us see this. Okay, SAP reorg jobs. Okay. So we have like various types of standard jobs. Okay. So this is one of the type of standard job. Okay. Now, as in my previous session, I just 
told that the job class, the type of, whether are you going to schedule this job in a high priority, medium or low priority. So here you have to define the class A, class B and class C. If you select this drop down, you will be seeing class A, class B and class C. Okay, let us take C, low priority. Now, here the status is scheduled. Schedule in sense, we have not releasing the job. Okay, just we have scheduled the job. Now, once you have defined the job name, job class, you have to go to step. As I told, for any job there will be a steps need to be defined. So you have to click the steps. Okay, so now. I am setting this job by using the user DDIC. Okay. So the name is the ABAP program. So this ABAP program will going to provide you going to provide by your ABAPers. So they will create the programs or a functional consultant will create their own programs. So once you create the program you have to select the variant. So most of the jobs will have variants and most of the jobs might not have variants. So in the case of standard jobs, there are few jobs which doesn't have any variants and few jobs which have variants. Okay, so if you click on this, you can see a variant has been assigned to this program. So you have to select that one and now you have to save. So I already explained about what's the role of ABAP program, external command and external program. So we are scheduling the job using the ABAP program. So just click on save. So what we did, we have now scheduled the background job using this program and the parameter that is steps. This is the back button, so just go one back and now we have not completed scheduling, we have just defined the job name and the job class and we have defined the steps. Now you have to provide the start condition, when do you want this job to run? Okay, When you click on the start condition you will be seeing here various tabs like immediate if you want to run the job immediately asked by the user, functional user then you can schedule it immediately okay or if you want if the user want to schedule it next week or some other time and so on so date yeah, then you are going to select the date and time when you want this job to start at what time okay and after job as I told like after job is nothing but there are some jobs which are dependent on other jobs. So which job needs to start once the job is successfully finished then you have to define that name. Okay. Then after event is nothing but event trigger jobs. So the again here the event name and parameter will be provided by, to you and you have to schedule accordingly. So this will kick off the other job if n number of jobs are dependent on each other okay so in a company you will see you will uh, need to schedule like three four jobs and the programs and stuff will be provided by your functional consultants or other users so you have to schedule accord accordingly okay at operation modes operation modes as you seen like in the daytime, you will be finding a lot of dialog work processes and less background work processes. So in the night time, if you see, automatically it will change the dialog, it will switch to background and background will switch to dialog. So you can schedule at operation modes. Okay. So this is a factory calendar like in a company 
they want to schedule a monthly job which pulls their uh, report for the sales or any vendor so this is basically for the jobs which needs to run a month or yearly okay so I'm going back so let us schedule the job now by taking the action immediate so we need this job to start right away so what you have to do it's already in the email start okay now what is the meaning of periodic job I mean like once you schedule the job now the next time it will automatically start the job if you select this periodic job okay so just you want to run this job only one time now then you no need to select this checkbox so this is very very important here if you see period values what it contains it contains the values like whether you want to schedule the job hourly daily weekly monthly or any other period so here you have to define so if you are defining that this job need to be run every hourly then you will select the hourly and so this job will start running every hour okay daily in the same time what is time now the same time tomorrow the job will start okay weekly so like as of today the next week the same day at the time the job will start okay monthly as I said like you can keep monthly jobs okay if the jobs needs to run on monthly basis other periods are nothing but if you are giving like this job need to run at the third month of first week or so and so day like this you know you can bench, you can provide those here so now we are not going to give anything here so we will just save it we won't give uh, anything just um, giving hourly and just click on save so see it, since I put it hourly so automatically that checkbox must be marked because you are this is a period job in every hour so but do you you doesn't want this job to run hourly so what you are doing to do you have to uncheck this periodic job okay so if you again go in here see it won't run hourly okay if you click on hourly and if you save then only that will affect otherwise no okay so it doesn't mean that here we uncheck the box and here you are seeing it's marked on hourly it won't run unless and until this checkbox is assigned so I'm not assigning that check mark so now once you give on this you have to save so the job will start now here we have given the job to start immediately now once you save that one you have to save here once you click on save then the job will kick off so once I save it what is saying the job SAP underscore your job save with status release now the status has been changed to release so this is how you are going to schedule the background jobs in any company so there are various types of jobs there are standard jobs there are created jobs by the functional consultants they will provide you the programs and the parameters the values which and the variance which needs to be assigned to that particular job so in our next session we're going to see how are we going to monitor the jobs okay so thank you so much bye hello everybody so today we are going to see how to monitor the background jobs Okay, so as in our last session, we have seen how to schedule and how we have created the background jobs using the transaction SM36. So to monitor the jobs, we need to 
use the transaction SM37. So type SM37 and hit enter. It will take you to the monitor screen. Here, which job you want to monitor? You have to assign the job name. Okay, and which user? You have to assign that username who has scheduled that job. Okay, and here are the job status like scheduled, release, ready, active, finish, and cancel. Scheduled. The status schedule is nothing but the stuff of job have already been defined. However, start condition must still be defined. As we have seen in our last session that we have scheduled the job but it was not released but once I click on the save button it has released right so and I have given that the job has to start immediately but you can schedule the job if you don't want to start like if you are if you want the job to schedule that next week then it will be in the schedule status, status until that time now what is the release since the job has been defined completely including the start condition like if you want the job to run immediately that the release status will come into picture the job cannot be released without a start condition so you have to provide that the job has to start immediately okay ready the status of ready is nothing but the start condition of a release jobs has been fulfilled. A job scheduler has placed the job in the wait queue for a free background work process. For example, say you have scheduled one job, okay, and some other has, user also scheduled the job at the same time. So, like this, if there are eight to ten jobs which are running at the same time, what will what will happen? The job which has been scheduled first at the time, it will be in the queue, okay? It will come first. The other jobs will be in the queue. So, if you have two background work processes, when these two background work processes are fulfilled by the two users who are scheduled at the same time, it will occupy that and the rest of them will be in a queue unless and until these background work processes are free. So, that's why it will show them the ready status. And the active, the job is currently being executed and cannot be released or changed. For example, say if you have scheduled one job and released, okay, and suddenly you want to cancel the job due to some reason, you cannot cancel or schedule the job if it is in the active status, okay. So this is very, very important. Finish job, if all the steps of the jobs are successfully completed, then it shows the status finished. Cancel job, like for example, the job is terminated, okay. Uh, like an administrator terminate the job using SM37 or he can cancel the active uh, the job button if you go to SM50 okay you can cancel that particular job so a job can be cancelled due to some error in the program so there are various way in the cancel jobs uh, like we can manually go and cancel or the job can be cancelled by its program error okay now let us see the job which we have scheduled so I am just giving a star and I am just executing because I have scheduled the job with the user DDIC last time so if I place you can see we have scheduled this job SAP reorg jobs and what is the status is showing finished right and how much duration it took for taking a job to complete 43 seconds okay delay one second why the delay is one second in sense like some of the jobs were running at the at the time so thus uh, one second delay happened so this is how you're we going to monitor the jobs using sm37 so this i only you uh, seen the jobs scheduled by the user DDIC. Similarly, if you want to see the jobs because at the SAP basis consultant you have to monitor all the user jobs not only the job uh, job created by a 
particular user or by you. You have to select all the users. So you have to put start and execute. And here the day if they you want to see the all jobs or today only then you have to mention. If you want to see for the six months what will happen, you can see that by giving the date here till date. Okay. So I'm just giving for today, I'm just executing this. So since only one user exists here, okay, uh, for example, we will schedule one more job to just show you practically like how it happens. I'm just coming out because I want to schedule a job with a different user, okay? Does everybody know how to log in to the client? So if you forget the password, you can reset the password. How to reset the password? That's a issue you will arrive so as a business consultant you can go with DDIC so I haven't logged in with the uh, user and I forgot that password so I want to reset that password so what I will do I will go to SU01 okay and I will put that username and what I will do I will click on the change password and you can give the password here. Like this, you will reset the password. So these kind of issues you will be getting in the practical. So now I have reset the password. Now we log on with user. So once you enter, because once you change the password, it will ask for the new password. As you have already seen in your last um, topic, uh, in your previous user administration topic, okay? Okay, let us go to SM36 for scheduling the background jobs by this user. Let me give the same job. Okay, and see, you have defined the job name, now you are defining the steps. Okay, now the user is this name as the program name assigned to this job. Okay, and you have to define the variant for this. Okay, and then click on save. Go back, start condition and click on immediate and save and click on save. The job was in schedule, now once I click on save it went to release. Now how to monitor the job? Let me go back. To monitor the background jobs you have to use the transaction SM37. Okay, now I am at, now I want to see all the user means it will show DDIC as well as mine also. Okay, once you hit execute, so if you see, it shows I am at and DDIC. Similarly, if n number of users are scheduling the jobs, you can see all their status in the status column. Like whether the jobs have been cancelled or, you know, or due to some reason then you as a SAP business consultant you have to reply to that particular user you can see the particular username here and you can get the email address and you can reply immediately to them saying that the job has been cancelled because you are the person who is monitoring the background jobs okay so this is how you perform the task of background jobs in any organization so hope you understood the background jobs concept, how to schedule, how to create and how to monitor. So thank you so much.
Bye.